So you're probably wondering, is real estate really the answer? Should I be investing in real estate? Tell me about the land. Well, I'm gonna give you six reasons why real estate investing is the answer. And the last reason, by the way, is the most overlooked reason. So stick around for that one. Give it to me, give it to me. All right, so number one reason, mainstream investments, or also known as mutual funds, have been proven not to work. I'll tell you this, being a financial advisor, I got to see this firsthand. I saw behind the scenes. I saw what was really behind the curtain here. And mutual funds aren't producing the results we thought. And heck, you don't even have to be living behind a curtain to be able to see this. Just look at retirees today. Although there's many retirees, just like my own father, who saved and saved, paid off all their debt, saved a ton of money in their 401ks, it's still proven to not be enough. Is that because they didn't save enough? Well, that's not necessarily true. Everybody tries to blame them, not the financial advisors. But the truth is mutual funds don't produce the kind of returns people think. For example, 90% of mutual funds don't even earn the returns of the S&P 500. But guess what the S&P 500 has returned the last 30 years? The average actual yield of the S&P 500 has only been about 7.65%. Guys, that's just over 7.5%, and most mutual funds don't even earn that, versus what you've been taught your whole life, which is 10, 12% you earn in the stock market. It's the best place to be, the best place to have your money, less risk, great returns. It's not, guys. It's high risk, mediocre returns. No, 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 no. So in my opinion, the number one reason for going to real estate is because mutual funds have been proven to fail 100% of the time. Now, okay, I better not say 100% of the time, because the truth is, there's always gonna be the exception, right? There's always an exception to the rule. But I'm gonna tell you that from my experience, watching a lot of clients, not just my own clients, but seeing other people's clients meet with financial advisors over the decades. And I've been in this industry for over 20 years. I can tell you it's true. The results aren't there. People are not retiring. And the sad thing is even when they get the 401k matches and they pay off their debt, they still feel like it's not enough. In fact, there's even surveys going out that millionaires, that 35% of those that have over a million dollars to invest still feel like it would take a miracle for them to be able to, re to retire. Why? Because you're told to live on 3%. So if you're even lucky enough to have a million dollars saved up in your retirement accounts, you're only supposed to live on $30,000 a year? And no, the whole 4% rule, that was debunked years and years ago. So if you wanna live on 100,000 a year, you gotta get your financial retirement account up to 3.33 million so you can live on about 100,000 a year and then you pay taxes. So you really don't live on 100,000 a year. You probably have to save at least four or five million so you can live on 100,000 a year. You see what I'm saying here? It's, it's just a broken model. And so why real estate investing? Because, hey, many of these alternative investments are backed by real assets. They're safer right? They actually have real assets to back them up. Hence the name real estate. You know, these assets are there and they're very great for inflation hedge and control that way. They're great in the sense that they don't have the big market swings. Like the stock market could go up or down sometimes two, three plus percent in a day. And you have no control over that, right? Where you, you see this with real estate, you just don't see that happening. Real estate's a much more steady game. Also, there's higher potential returns with less risk. As I mentioned, not only do you have a, a better asset that isn't just going up and down with market swings and things like that, doesn't mean that you can't see ups and downs in the values of those homes. But the great thing is you can have higher potential returns. Understand that if you buy like a rental property, for example, and you buy it with leverage where you have a mortgage on it, you actually have four returns that you can earn on that. So you've got appreciation. You do have cash flow, especially if you get one that's profitable when it comes to with rent and things like that. You also have tax advantages. So even the cash flow I do receive, often I'll pay little to no taxes on that money because I can depreciate these properties. So not only is there appreciation, not only is there cash flow coming from it, which could be huge returns, but now the great thing is I'm also keeping more of my money too. I can't do that with an IRA or 401k. I have to pay full income taxes. Now the fourth one, the fourth one is if you get a mortgage on your property, your renters are paying down the mortgage for you. That's one of the thing is beautiful. Even if you don't have an appreciation, sometimes you can make easily 10, 15, 20% a year without any appreciation in that property, just for the fact that you have cash flow coming in and they're paying down your mortgage for you. So you're getting instant equity regardless if the house appreciates or not. Now the great thing is usually it does appreciate so it has appreciation while the mortgage balance goes down, your equity keeps growing and growing over time. And that's why it's not impossible to see a few hundred percent returns in a matter of a few years. So that's one of the great things there is that you have greater potential returns with less risk, especially when you own and control it too. I already mentioned the great tax advantages which are awesome. I like having more control. One thing that's great is that with real estate, for example, if something goes wrong, you can actually do something about it. For example, if you have a rental that stops paying you, well, now I don't actually manage my own properties. I let a property manager deal with it, but the property manager has to go and find a way to kick them out and get a new renter in. So there's more control. I can, we can actually do something about that. I got thrown out of a window, man. Now, the crazy thing is on the stock market side, you can't do that. If the market goes down, you're helpless. 
you have to watch it go down. What can you do? What, just sell your stocks? That's it, right? That's all you can do. And most people won't do that because they don't wanna lose money. So what do they do? They ride those waves all the way through. Even if it keeps going down, 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 they don't get out. And then until maybe if it goes down long enough and they get hurt so badly, they usually get out at the bottom, which is the worst time to get out. Well, I'll tell you this. I mean, despite all these great things, right? That you can do with real estate, the fact that it's backed by real assets, you have higher potential returns with less risk, not high risk creates high returns, but lower risk creates high returns, better tax advantages, more control, multiple rates of return. The great thing is, like I just mentioned, there's better passive income potential. It's so awesome to think about what you can do with that money. For example, $100,000, if you live on that 3%, that's only $3,000 a year, 250 bucks a month, and then you pay taxes on it. But what if I could take that same 100,000, use that as a down payment on a property, buy a $400,000 property, by the way, and then with that property, that's cash flow me, say it's 800 bucks a month, or about $10,000 a year. So instead of making $3,000 a year and paying taxes, I can make 10,000 a year and pay little taxes or no taxes at all. I keep more of my money. That means I make at least quadruple with the same money invested and I have less risk, especially if I do it right. Guys, that to me is what I call a no brainer, right? It's a no brainer and it actually inspires hope. That was the big difference for me, why I couldn't be a financial advisor any longer because I was just a salesman in a suit trying to offer you financial products that have already been proven not to work. Where in my own real life and in my own clients' lives, we have 100% success rate where clients actually create some sort of passive income with their investments. That's amazing. Some of them are even financially independent right now like I am. That's amazing too. I can't say that about anybody that I ever had investing in mutual funds, ever, ever. Even the ones that I inherited that had decades of help from financial advisors still couldn't get there. Yet we have people that are creating cash flow in a matter of months. Some of them are even becoming financially independent within a year or so. Many might take five, 10 years or so to be able to get there, but they're getting there. Because if you're wise with your money and you use it in a way that creates more passive income, that is the biggest reason why I think that real estate is the answer. Hey guys, if you wanna see more of this, Check out this next video in the series about why this is the answer. Check it out.